Hi friends, it's Dr. Veronica Vax, naturopathic physician, happily retired. Today, we are going to talk about cause of heartburn. And I decided to create this quickly video because it was precipitated by this comment by Billy C. This is a joke he writes on one of the, my uh, videos. First of all, GERD is not caused by low acidity in the stomach. It caused by esophageal sphincter not closing properly. Billy, you are absolutely right. Um, a year ago, I posted this video exactly on this topic that medical community changed its mind and high production of hydrochloric acid is not the cause of acid reflux anymore. It is low esophageal sphincter. Now, it was easy. If high production of hydrochloric acid was the cause, then the treatment was obvious. It's H2 blockers. When I was young and beautiful, I treat patients with H2 blockers. Then PPIs came on the market. Now our love affair with PPIs is over because many years ago, black spark warning was issued for this drug and patients are just not compliant because so many side effects uh, due to PPI. So not a high production of hydrochloric acid cause, then sphincter. Obvious question is, what's going to be the treatment? So we don't have a drug for that. You cannot treat low esophageal sphincter with PPIs. The answer is surgery. I decided to look into a couple of them, fund application, because that's the oldest one, and link surgery. Let's go. Fund application is a procedure that's done either through the esophagus, through the chest, or through the abdomen, and surgeon decide with which axis is going to be the best. And flap of the stomach is taken and wrapped around esophagus and basically reinforces low esophageal sphincter. When you Google success rate of fund application, you will come to this number, 89%. I am very much for that. If this is the success rate in 10 years, let's do everybody, not that fast. Let's go to the medical literature and look further. Let's look at the articles that was published in 2005. By that time, a little bit data accumulated about fund application because the fund application started in 1991. Very few surgeons were able to do that as the number of surgeons went up. So um, the number of patients went up and we started to see the effect of the results of fund application. So, Laparoscopic fund application have been recently been called into question. The rate of failure following fund application for gastroesophageal reflux disease varies from 2 to 30 percent. So here we have a 30 percent. But I like the next sentence. It says, depending on how failure is defined, that's very important because if surgeon is very good, so the failure rate due to surgery is going to be only 2%. Where this number 30% is coming is because, um, for example, failure requiring resumption of medical therapy versus failure requiring reoperation. So the operation rate probably if the surgeon is good will be low. However, the, the um, restart the, the medical treatment with PPI may be necessary. Here are the indications for the fund application. And you can see almost everybody could be qualified for the, for the surgery because many patients have asthma, hoarseness. Well, a lot of people have off. So read through, through them and understand if you are qualified for the surgery. Next, links. This is the new surgery on the market. Everybody is asking about that. And I decided to say a few words about that. So device is magnetic device that tights around low esophageal sphincter. When the food is comes in, it can, it can go through, drop into, into your stomach and then links because of the magnetic uh, properties closes and the food cannot come back into your esophagus. Results from initial clinical trials were promising with excellent results relative to control of acid reflux and with fewer of the adverse effects. They are talking about the adverse reactions to um, fund apl applications such as dysphagia, gas bloating. So that's the 30% that's the that I was talking about. When people after the fund application are talking about gas bloating, dysphagia and, and, and other complications. The safety procedure seems to be very good. So let's look at that further patient selection. When you start to read the medical literature 
only 2 to 2.4% of the patients with acid reflux are qualified for the surgery. So um, it's a, when, the, when they fail, uh, PPI don't work. Abnormal pH have intact esophageal junction as determined by high resolution of mono, uh, resolution manometry. So you go and do all of this laboratory work. By the way, this information came from this article and I will post I will post that in the, in the link below. So go ahead and, and read it. So let's look at that article a little bit. Article is talking about refractory uh, acid reflex. So let's scroll and um, look at that. And on table one, the causes of refractory acid reflex. So PPI adherence, obviously the person doesn't take regularly because the side effect and the functional esophageal disorder, such as functional, functional means we don't know the reason. So we look at there, there is no pathology there. So it means functional, functional heartburn, esophageal hypersensitivity. And look at that, irritable bowel syndrome. Every time I'm, I'm talking to my clients, every time I'm, I'm doing lecture, I always tell the digestive tract, don't, don't just treat acid reflex, treat the whole digestive tract. If you have IBS, treat the IBS. You have a constipation, first deal with constipation, especially if that's long-standing disease. So let's go and look on the slide. And by the way, if you read this article further, so you look about all of that, learn, um, let's see, for example, weekly acid reflex, what that means, and um, duodena, duodena gastroesophageal reflux. There was some place here. Oh, here is irritable bowel syndrome where they're talking about 71% uh, about of patients with IBS will have acid reflux. So let's go back to our slides. Um, weekly acid reflux, and this is interesting duodenal gastroesophageal reflux. What that means, means that content of duodenal, duodenal is a small intestine, this portion of the small intestine. Content of the small intestine goes through the pillarus into the stomach and to esophagus. Hey guys, this is absolutely unacceptable. Why? You know, from, uh, from the lectures, from physiology that I teach here on my play, playlist, food have to move from top to the bottom. Food cannot go backward, but food is going. So this is example that medical community does understand that something else is going on in the digestive tract that can create this acid reflex. And they try to look at that. And that's, that's the, that's a refractory uh, acid reflex. Uh, um, delayed gastric emptiness. What does that mean? It means that food is staying here, non-digested. It does not go here into small intestine. Why the food does not get digested? Maybe low production of hydrochloric acid. Maybe the pillarus is not open because small intestine is not ready to accept the food. So why is it staying there? Isinophilic esophagitis basically means allergy and other causes unrelated to acid reflux. Guys, I remain strong on my statement. GERD is multifactorial disease. Please see my video of this. Eight common causes of acid reflux. Follow these rules. Prepare your food, meaning activate your parasympathetic system. So make sure that you produce juices, not only hydrochloric acid, but bile juices, pancreatic juices. Eat slowly. Don't watch TV and don't work during that time. Stew your food two to three times. It means that you cannot take a big, big piece and just put it there and wash down with the water. Eliminate the junk food. Eliminate chemicals, preservatives. Um, people for, with uh, prediabetes, they, they take these pockets of, uh, instead of sugar, the, the chemicals, the xylitol, I think, some other kind of junk. Eliminate all of that. You don't want, that, 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 that's what you don't want. Azenophilic esophagitis, that's what the uh, chemicals create. Treat constipation, deal with IBS, deal with your liver and pancreatic insufficiency. So meaning fix your small intestine environment, fix hiatal hernia, think about food allergy sensitivity. Do not drink water with your, especially cold water with your meals. Okay, guys, um, I want to say, so if you try all of that and you decided, I tried, it does not work. 
I'm going for surgery. I'm very much for that. I will support your, your decision, do it. But if you think that you can trick the surgeon and then expect success from links or from other surgery, links will, link will teach you hard way that you have to eat slowly and you have to chew the food because what happens, links is a tight junction on your loisophageal sphincter. If you swallow a big piece of pizza, it will come here and it will stay here because it cannot go through, okay? Links will teach you to eat slowly, okay? If you don't eat slowly, the, the food will pile up into your esophagus and you feel like you're <gasps> choking and everything is going up here, okay? So that's what is the, the failure of the surgery. People will complain. So I beg you, do what I say. Re the, see these eight common causes of acid reflex. And what I want, if you are the person who um, either planning to go for the surgery and did your own research, or a person who already had the surgery, tell about your success story. I want to talk to people about that. And if it was not success, tell me about that too. I'm open to hear that. Let's have a conversation. Thank you very much, guys. Like, subscribe. Bye-bye for now.